Now in this verse, what Jesus is basically saying is, I have an attitude towards both of you that I forgive you both. I grant you both forgiveness. But she knows, she believes she's forgiven. And not only that, she believes she's forgiven a lot. That's why she's acting like this. Now, it's not that she did those things and then Jesus said, all right, all right, I see that you're doing all this, I'll now forgive you. She already believed she was forgiven, according to what Jesus said, and that's why she's exhibiting this love. She's exhibiting this kind of behavior because she believes she's already forgiven. Now, my question is, where did she get that idea? Where did she get the idea that she was forgiven? He doesn't explain it, but I think she was back in chapter 5 in that crowd. And I think she saw that man come through the roof. And I think she saw Jesus say, your sins are forgiven. And I think she thought, if his sins are forgiven, mine can be too. This man, Jesus, is granting forgiveness from sin. And he even said, I have the authority. I have the authority on earth to forgive sins. And I think she began to ponder that, and she really came to believe. My sin, I'm free. She got free. And so she came believing that to the man who set her free. And she began to show this kind of gratitude to him because she believes she's free. And just so she gets the point in verse 48, Jesus said, Thy sins are forgiven. Notice this is the exact same thing he said to that man that came through the roof. Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgives sins also? In other words, they didn't like it very much. You know, they're kind of questioning verse 50. He ignored all of them, just said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee, go in peace. What faith? She, what did she believe? She believed her sins are forgiven. Now, why is that important? Why am I advocating that you should believe the same thing? Because it will make you free. Yeah. It, uh, it's important to be free from that attitude of, uh, of condemnation and, and thinking you're not quite right with God. Now, I want you to please get the point that he didn't do it because you did something in response to you. He did it first. 2,000 years ago, he put your sins on Jesus on the cross. He wants you to know about it and believe in it. And not only that, walk in the light of it. Now, i got one more verse to read, and I'm done. And I had a lot more, but I see I, I, I was too long-winded with this, because I wanted to talk about, secondly, the fact that sin not only has a penalty from which we are free, but it has a power, and we're free from that too. But I'm just going to conclude with this. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. This is the Apostle Paul. And I want you to know something that he says here. Two things that are important. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And here's a remarkable thing that he says. I am crucified with Christ. Not that he, he doesn't say, I'm trying to be. He says, I am. In what sense could, Apostle, could the Apostle Paul say, I am crucified with Christ? Well, in this sense. On the cross, when Jesus was crucified, he was carrying our sins in his own body on the tree. He was paying the penalty for our... He was taking on himself everything that was wrong with us. And so if Jesus carried in his body everything wrong with us on the cross, then something of me got crucified with him. What of me got crucified with him? Uh, my old life. Everything wrong with me. Everything that disqualifies me. So therefore, Paul looks at it that way. And he says, I'm crucified with Christ. I see myself that way. But he says, nevertheless, I live. That's interesting. I, I'm I died. My old life died with Christ. But nevertheless, I live. But listen to this. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. He's saying, this is the way I look at it. I have the attitude, Paul is saying, about the cross that Jesus died for me, and so something in me died with him. That's what I believe about it, Paul is saying. And I'm alive, but I don't account that it's just me anymore. It's Christ living in me. Now listen to this. This is the second part. And there's a lot more we can say about that first part. But I want to go on to this so I can conclude. He says, The life that I now live in the flesh, that is in this physical body, in this physical world. Listen to this. The life that I now live in the flesh, here's how I do it. I live by faith. Stop right there. Paul says, the life, this is the way I engage life, by faith. Faith does not function on its own without an object. You have to have faith in something. And here's what it is, faith of, or faith in, the Son of God. So that's good. His faith has an object, Jesus, the Son of God, and that's the way I live my life in the flesh. But not just that, 
something special about Jesus. He says, here's how I live my life. Here's how I deal with life. It's by faith in Jesus, the Son of God, comma, who loved me. Now, does that sound familiar? Have we heard that before? Yeah, I started with that. In Revelation chapter 1, Apostle John said, unto him that loves us and freed us from our sins. And Paul here says the same thing. I live life in the flesh by faith in the Son of God who loved me, and he gave himself for me. Paul said, that's the important thing to me. What I put all my faith and confidence in is that Jesus looked at me and loved me, and then he gave himself for me. With what result? We read it in Revelation. Uh, we're freed. We're separated from our sins. Psalm 103. I said I'm going to conclude with this, but I've, I've got one more for you. I can't uh, quit without giving this. Psalm 103, Phil, if you could give me that, the 103rd Psalm. Just please notice this. This is a prophetic psalm. How do I know it's prophetic? Because it's talking about the things that we're now discussing that took place because of the cross. Look at what it says in verse 12. I said freed from our sins means separated from our sins. Look at this beautiful expression. This is very poetic and beautiful the way it says it. 103rd Psalm, verse 12. Let's back up to verse 10. He hath not not means no. He hath not dealt with us after our sins. Boy, that'd be a good thought to get. I think most Christians think he does. I think most people in the world think he strictly deals with us according to our sins. But it says he does not. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. It says he has not and does not. That's an important thing about the nature and character of God. For as, high, for as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward him, them that fear him, meaning them that reverence him and regard him with respect. Okay? Listen to this. This is what I want to end with. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. He freed us, separated us from... Well, let me ask you a question. How far is the east from the west? Well, pretty far. In other words, it's, it's, uh, it's conceptually opposite. If you're going to go east, if you're pointing east, you'll never run into west. Is that right? <laughs> right? Yeah. East and west don't ever... East is, is that way, west is that way, and they don't ever... If you go east, you're never going to see west again. You know what I'm saying? You've got to go west to go west. But east and west don't meet. As far as east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. What is the psalmist trying to say in this poetic language? He's done something about our sins and our transgressions, and he's separated us from so far that you're never going to... He, he doesn't want you to know about him anymore. Doesn't want you to think about him anymore. Doesn't want you to worry about him anymore. And he's sure not going to bring it up and put it in your face anymore. He has separated us, freed us from our sins. Now, Jesus said, when you find out what's really true, that knowledge will make you free. What is this knowledge? And we know specifically from the context that he was talking about being free from sin. And today I'm just talking about one side of it, the penalty from sin. What does that do for you when you find that out? It makes you free. You're free. You can walk in the light of it and have a free relationship with God, not worried about, about anything. You're free.